Hi, Tech Rabbit here again. Ain't life exciting? Sorry about the background noise. It's um 34 degrees Celsius outside, so we'll get a bit hot in here. But it was funny. My air conditioning unit, so I have to survive through that. Nice, nice weather though. Anyway, um, interesting experiences with power over the Ethernet. I, um, if you watch my previous video up there, I actually unboxed a Zuxel GS1008 HP um, uh, fully in a uh, power over Ethernet uh, enabled switch. And I connected in various uh, Ethernet devices, no issue, my storage area network, the uplink, um, some other stuff. And uh, then I went to plug in the computer, which is running an Asus X470 Plus gaming um, car, uh, motherboard. Plugged it into the NIC and lights out. The, pro the switch went dark. Nothing happened on the computer side, uh, other than there was no network connection. And um, so I started in investigating, you know, did I have a cable thing, swapped out the Ethernet cable and stuff, the usual stuff one tries. And uh, every time I plugged it into the computer, then it just like, you know, the um, switch died. And um, then I started rambling around the internet, like most people would do, and found lots of different weird articles about um, Asus motherboards and power over the Ethernet um, uh, switch boxes having compatibility problems and not working together to the extent of actual in certain instances motherboards going up in smoke or switch switches going up in smoke um, and um, you know after I did some experiments like trying to disable the power delivery which failed because from the point you know, power over ethernet because you know, it was actually using the the um, both A and B modes of operation so I couldn't actually discontinue the power feed um, I concluded that um, the following must be the case I think Asus Tech has been trying to protect their motherboards against uh, over voltages and surges. Uh, the problem with power over the uh, Ethernet is that it um, uses approximately, it varies a bit, but let's say for argument's sake, over 40 volts is the, like 48 volts is around there. It's what the um, power over Ethernet delivers in terms of voltages. So there's, I my conclusion is that there's protection circuitry on the entrance to the Ethernet um, NIC on the input pins. So if the voltage difference between any pin gets more than a certain value, then it short circuits it. And what's happening is the thankfully I have this Zuxel um, switch is well protected, and, uh, and my conclusion is that it's um, detecting a short circuit of, of the um, power feed, and then it's shutting itself off, which is nice uh, itself. I mean, none of my equipment broke. The, the motherboard was working fine. The switch is working fine. So, um, ramble around looking for a solution, and, and there doesn't, there is no. You know, there were wild things like, oh, you know, cut the ground cables, but that, or have a floating power supply. But basically, those two attempts are to be able to try and disconnect the reference point. But I don't think it will. Um, yeah, having a floating power supply would. Yeah, I don't even know how you'd actually get that to work. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll leave that for the ex experiment. <laughs> that gets a bit extreme. Yeah, sorry for that. Anyway, uh, so those were the few things. But I mean, the idea with those tricks is to try and um, try and prevent the Asus motherboard from doing the voltage um, uh, over, you know, to detect the over voltage and then stops doing the short circuiting. Um, but anyway, it's 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 
basically you can't do anything about it the the you know you so um I would think and on this I haven't tried uh you could buy a separate NIC card. It actually seems to be rather hard, at least locally on the local market here, buying a physical NIC card is oddly enough it's not available. Nobody nobody sells NICs. Everything's gone wireless. Uh, you can go to a little bit more expensive online location and, and buy like high-end NICs. That's like in, in our region. And then of course if you do Amazon and stuff, you can buy whatever you want. Or China. Uh, but anyway, the short, most cases, the short term fix is to not plug um, the um, motherboard into a uh, power of Ethernet um, switch of any kind. And it is to actually isolate the, um, you know, the power of Ethernet with a standard switch. So this is a standard gigabit um, switch. Which we are going to now unbox. One of the many that are very generic. That there's lots of manufacturers that have this, have these switch. You could also buy a uh, power over Ethernet switch that has non-power over Ethernet ports. So there are manufacturers that have those. But I haven't actually in the in the local shelf when I went to try and buy stuff like pick it directly off the shelf. The only gigabit switches they had were either with power over the Ethernet on all ports or um, you know the vanilla switch actually moved on the camera here I was there uh, wondering if I should even do this with an unboxing. I uh, don't know how many people are interested. But anyway, this is the solution. So what you do is you take this and you connect the computer into here and then you forward from the computer you put it into the power of the power of the Ethernet switch if you would like to have them both online at the same time. So what I'll be we, I will be doing is I will be uh, moving uh, Moving my, the, my network connections to this and then having an outlink cable to the power over, over Ethernet switch and that will only feed devices that actually need power. Or if the ports run out here because actually most, uh, I, as I said, I have had, uh, have tested various Ethernet RJ45 cable equipment on the power over Ethernet. Um, switch and, and the only one that's caused has had the weird behavior of not, op not operating is the um, ASUS mother. Oh, Quick installation guide. Uh, do you actually have to like install this? <laughs> okay. That, so that's probably the man. Basic. This was this was cheap, and Lynx is a, is a basically it's a reputable brand. Yeah. Quite nice looking. So there's eight ports. I think I will find the power supply somewhere. Minus rusted so paper, a few pads, almost. Come on. I think we should do the same test we did with the other switch. See if it actually blinks when we plug it in. Link from here to the power over Ethernet. Oh, I didn't move the outlet. 
that's closer. Again, I really need to put in an outlet that's closer. Okay, so that um, solved the, um, or is going to solve, the, I mean, I doubt that it won't work, really. it's, yeah. What do need, uh, who to blame? Ah, well, uh, uh, cheap power over ethernet devices that don't actually use intelligence to sense if a device on the other end um, wants to have power or not. There are methods you can use to do that. Uh, Asus for being a bit overzealous on implementing protection circuits without due consideration to the full spectrum of standards that are for the NIC. Of course it can be that the design for the protection circuit wasn't made by ASUS, it could have been a real tech um, making the reference and then ASUS just using it without any uh, consider. I think it's actually worrisome for consumers that you can plug the motherboard into um, power over, over the Ethernet switches that have a lot of power output capability and, and limited protection circuitry that can actually blow up the yeah try to try to, try to burn out the uh, protection circuit anyway that's the, that's the way life goes anyway if you enjoyed this video found it informative consider um subscribing you might hit on some other video that might be useful you know click the bell to get notified and um yeah i'm going to go and install this now I think it's gonna work and um, see you in the next one.